Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to today's video on this uh, Monday. I hope you have had a great weekend this uh, weekend. Hope you were able to uh, be in your church and be able to have uh, time worshiping the Lord. And I'm glad you're back this week. And we're going to be continuing our tournament uh, this week. Uh, with the help of the Lord, we'll be doing a video on today on Monday and then on Wednesday and on Friday. Uh, so if you perhaps missed our first videos last week, uh, they're available on this YouTube page to go back and watch. Uh, I will let you know the voting has ended on those videos. Uh, but this new tournament we're doing, we're looking at uh, the inspirational ladies in the Bible. Uh, this is a study that's going to take about 10 weeks to complete. Um, so I, I'm just so glad you're here and thank you for watching these and participating. Uh, please remember if you uh, would like to vote when you watch the videos, you can vote for which person inspires you more. Um, it's just a little fun activity we like to do with these videos. Um, but most importantly, these videos are here uh, so that you can learn and just enjoy studying God's Word. So I want to begin this by giving you the uh, results of our video on Friday. We looked at Rahab uh, from the book of Joshua, and we looked at Anna from the Christmas story, and the results are in. And this is the results. We had Rahab with 71% and Anna with 29% of the votes. So folks, that means that Rahab has advanced to the second round of our tournament and she will be paired with Mary Magdalene in the second round when we get to that point. All right, so that means we now are ready for today's video. Today we're going to be looking at a lady who is in the New Testament. She's in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and uh, her name is Salome. And if you don't know about her story, I guarantee you by the end of this video, you're going to be amazed at what you learn about her. Uh, wonderful story. Um, so we'll see Salome first. Then we're going to look at Eve. You can't get more famous than Eve. There's no way we could do this tournament and leave out the uh, first lady. Uh, you know, we're looking at ladies of the Bible. Eve was the first uh, lady. So we're going to enjoy today's study. So Let's go ahead and begin by looking at this lady, Salome. Now, Salome appears uh, in, as we've already said, in the Gospels. Um, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but she uh, is the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus. All right, and uh, we will get into that a little bit, how we know that, but you can uh, kind of compare the scriptures from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, certain stories uh, mention uh, her by name, and then that same story in one of the other gospels refers to her as Mary's sister. So this is the sister of Mary, meaning that uh, that Salome was an aunt to Jesus. Okay, that's very fascinating. But we also know that this lady is the mother of James and John. All right, uh, which means if you kind of uh, piece this together, that means that James and John, the sons of thunder, were first cousins with Jesus. Okay? But we know James and John were two of the uh, 
best disciples. Um, they were they were two of the very closest to Jesus. They were a part of the twelve original apostles. So these were two great young men who became two of the top leaders of the church. But it's important to give credit where credit is due and remember who raised them, who trained them, who gave them that godly heritage that James and John, when they grew up and became men, they were ready to serve the Lord. It's because they had godly parents like this lady here, Salome. So the first thing I'm going to write is that she raised two great sons. Okay? She raised two great sons, and that is, of course, James and John. All right? Now, we know from other stories in the Gospels that... This lady is famous for asking Jesus a certain question. She asked Jesus one day if when they get to heaven, if her two sons, James and John, would be able to sit on Jesus' left side and right side in the kingdom. Now, many people have read that story before and have criticized this lady and said, well, that's very prideful for her. And she shouldn't, you know, we, we shouldn't want the, the top spots and, and stuff. Now, I understand where, where that criticism comes from, but, you know, there is a different way to look at that. Uh, this lady here, that famous story in the Gospels, Think about it. I mean, what better thing to desire for your children than that they could be as close to Jesus as possible? So when you think about it that way, this lady's request, there was nothing wrong with that at all. She wanted the best for her two sons. She wanted, when they got to heaven, that could they have the spot sitting at Jesus's right hand and left hand. So this shows you the heart of this lady Salome and the mindset that she had for God. She wanted her children as close to the Lord as possible. So I'm going to write second of all, she asked Jesus, A request for her sons okay now I just wrote it that way uh, because I don't have space up here to write you know all those details that we just talked about now this lady appears again um, at Mount Calvary now, folks, I always put a lot of emphasis when we talk about the crucifixion of Christ. Uh, I put a lot of emphasis on the, the supporters who came. You know, we've talked about it before. Many of the main followers of Jesus didn't come. They, they were afraid and they were hiding. Uh, even Peter was so afraid that he would die as well that he denied three times even knowing Jesus. But we're told that there wasn't many there at Mount Calvary, but we are told that, of course, Jesus' mother Mary was there, and guess who else was there? His mother's sister, this wonderful lady Salome, was present at Mount Calvary, and also one of those sons, John the Apostle was there as well. So at least Jesus in his final moments was surrounded by some of his family and some of his closest followers. Uh, we saw just the other day Mary Magdalene, one of the closest followers, she was there as well. 
So that tells me a lot about this lady and her commitment to God, that she was willing to be there in a dangerous time, in a dangerous moment, and support Jesus as he was dying on the cross. So I'm going to write that up here. All right, she was present at Mount Calvary when Jesus was being crucified. Now, folks, this last thing here I'm going to say, we're told several times that as Jesus was traveling and he and the 12 disciples, and we're told that there was a group of women who would follow as well. The scripture says they would minister to them, probably things such as cooking and uh, things like that, okay? So um, we're told that it was a group of ladies. Now, the scripture doesn't often tell us who those ladies were, but by uh, comparing some scriptures, it appears that this lady, Salome, just as she was at Mount Calvary, it appears that she was one of those women who was traveling, maybe not constantly with the Jesus and the disciples, but in many key moments, uh, it appears that she was one of those ladies, those extra ladies who come and uh, would be there to support them, okay? And so one of those moments that I'm referring to in Acts chapter one, we're told that after, the, uh, after Jesus had went back to heaven, we're told that, that the disciples were gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem and that his mother, Jesus' mother Mary was there and it says, and the women. So we believe Salome appears to be one of those close ladies who was there in those key moments. Okay. So I'm going to write up here. I could word this. Uh, a few different ways. But I simply just use one of those examples we talked about, and I put that she was probably in the upper room. That's in Acts chapter 1, in a key moment with the disciples, um, just serving God in the ministry. Okay? So, folks, uh, it's time now as we go in today's video to move to our second person, but you have now seen the story of Salome. Many people don't even know her by name, but she is a family of Jesus, Mary's sister. She was at Mount Calvary. She raised great sons, James and John, asked Jesus for a high position for them in heaven and was there in key moments. So folks, what an inspirational lady. Um, so she's definitely worthy of getting votes in this video today. But I ask you, as we now move to the next person, to please don't make up your mind about who you're gonna vote for until you hear both people in the video. And then at the very end, you can think about your vote, cast your vote then, please. So we're gonna now move to Eve. Now I'm going to tell you folks that this was a difficult study for me because if you think about Adam and Eve, really what pops to most people's minds is the mistake that they made. You know, it's not often that we think about Adam and Eve and we think about, okay, what can we be inspired about by her? or by Adam. So that's what I tried to focus on in the study, and I'm gonna tell you it was a challenge, but I think I am gonna show you her story today in a way that I believe 
should be inspiring to anyone who hears this. So I'm going to now begin by looking at, at Eve. All right, she was the first lady. Uh, the Bible calls her the mother of all living. Okay. Now, I want to think about real quick the time that they were in the Garden of Eden before they sinned. You know, we often think, well, they must have sinned very quick. Well, that doesn't appear to be the case. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us how many, how long was it, how many years were they there before they sinned. But we believe that it's a pretty good many years they spent in the Garden of Eden. Uh, if, if I'm remembering correctly, the scripture says that Adam and Eve didn't have children until they were about 100 years old. Now, I know that sounds strange, but uh, please remember in the beginning, people lived to be over 900 years old. Well, we're told that about age 100, they had their first children, but that was outside the Garden of Eden after they had sinned. Let's remember, folks, that Satan was once a good angel in the beginning. His name was Lucifer. And he appears to have been a good angel for quite a while until he rebelled against God. And then, of course, he tempted Adam and Eve and they sinned. So uh, it appears that there were many great years in the Garden of Eden for Adam and Eve. God would come down and walk with Adam in the cool of the day and fellowship with him. And so they loved God and they... They uh, had a lot of time in that Garden of Eden. So I'm going to start with that, with Eve. Many great years in the Garden of Eden. Okay, sorry if my handwriting is gets small. Sometimes it's hard to fit it in there. Um, but, you know, we often forget about that. Uh, we just simply think God created them, put them there, and they sinned immediately, and that's just not the case. Okay? But we know after they got out of the Garden of Eden, we know that they still lived for a very, very, very long time, and we often don't think about what was their life like after the Garden of Eden? Okay. Well, we know this, that they had children. Now, two names pop to mind immediately, Cain and Abel. But there's also many children, more they had. The scripture says they had sons and daughters. So they had many, it's no telling how many children uh, living that long of a life that they had. We know that one of their sons, uh, one of their first two sons, Abel, was a righteous young man. He loved God, served God, but the other one, Cain, uh, didn't have a heart for God, and he didn't love God. And of course, we know what happened. Cain was jealous. God uh, favored Abel, and, uh, Ab and he killed his brother Abel. But have you ever thought about how did Abel get spiritual? The, the young man Abel, who taught him, who trained him, and, and kind of passed on, uh, kind of like we saw over here with Salome and her sons, how did Abel, the righteous son, get to that point? Well, I can tell you how he got to that point, and that's because of his parents. You see, we often think, well, Adam and Eve sinned, so they were bad. Well, folks, think about it. Have you ever given in to a temptation by the devil? Everyone has. That one mistake Adam and Eve made uh, doesn't define their entire life. Now, unfortunately, it banned them out of the Garden of Eden, but they were spiritual. They loved God. Uh, 
And we see that in the heritage that they gave their children. So when Cain killed his brother Abel, we're told that they had another son named Seth. They named him Seth. If you read uh, Genesis chapter uh, 3, they named him Seth because they realized that God gave them another baby to replace the spiritual Abel who was killed. You can see there just in naming Seth that desire that Adam and Eve had to have children who loved God. You see, so this shows you a reflection of Adam and Eve's heart. They wanted their children to love God and serve God with their life. All right, so I'm going to write. I'm going to write this down real quick. All right, I just simply put, they gave their children a spiritual heritage. Now, here again, sometimes people will only look at the mistake they made, but we forget they lived a very long life. And you can see it in how they brought up their children, how much they, Adam and Eve, loved God. The third thing that I want to say is this. Here again, they lived over 900 years. Folks, this earth, if you believe the Bible, you'll know that this earth is only about 6,000 years old. So they literally lived almost one-sixth of the history of the whole earth. They would have seen generation after generation over and over, many generations of their family, and uh, think about how that they, Adam and Eve, would have been able to tell their story to their descendants, their grandchildren, great, great, great grandchildren. They would have had opportunity to pass that spiritual heritage on to their, all their descendants, leading all the way up to Noah and even his children. They would have had the opportunity to tell many generations about God and about how they would walk with God in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden many years ago. So I'm going to put told many generations about God. And the last thing I'm going to say, have you ever thought about with Adam and Eve? You know, it says when they, banned, when they were banned from the Garden of Eden, it doesn't say that God destroyed the Garden. It says God protected them from going back in. I believe as their life grew on, they still knew where the Garden of Eden was. And I believe that they probably felt regret a lot of regret now even though they were serving god with their life and telling many generations of raising spiritual children i think eve always remembered the moment she gave in to the devil and i believe that she struggled with that regret wishing she wouldn't have done that and that way that her children and grandchildren and all could have had the opportunity to have been in the Garden of Eden. But I want to say this one last thing. Have you ever wondered, did, did Eve and Adam have to battle Satan more after the Garden of Eden? Of course. Folks, Satan does that and attacks us every day. I believe Eve had many more moments in her life where she battled the devil and him, his temptations, but guess what? I believe she had many victories throughout the rest of her life, as we can see here, uh, over the devil. 
So I'm going to write that last of all. I believe she had many victories over Satan in her life. Yes, she gave in to the one in the garden, but I think she had many more victories in the rest of her life. So folks, this is the story of Eve. I tried to present it in a way to give you more of the complete picture of her, not just the one moment of weakness in the Garden of Eden. I hope it's been a blessing to you today, and I ask you to please consider which person inspires you more of these two? Is it Eve, the mother of all living, who lived many years and taught many generations about God? Or is it Salome, who was there at Mount Calvary supporting Jesus and had godly sons, James and John, and, you know, was there in key moments? So, folks, which person inspires you more? Please cast your vote for the winner. Of today's video looks like I've gone over in the time we're at about 26 minutes um, I like keeping these videos about 20 to 22 minutes uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this today please tune back in later this week we'll be having some more videos and I hope it's been a blessing to you uh, so until next time please cast your vote and please take care we'll see you then until then God bless you